So, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the drop, boys? We're gonna milk it. Oh! <gasps> oh, baby boys! We got a nightmare staff. Let's go, boys. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Ah, oh, nice. I don't have to juggle the orbs anymore. Hell yeah, dude. I'll take it. I'll take it, man. Haha. -ha. Yes. Oh, my God. I DC'd the kill earlier, so I had to pick that up fast, man. I wasn't gonna wait, because imagine DCing. You know, god damn, right on that drop. Jesus. Woohoo, baby. Okay, that's awesome because, yeah, now I can uh, do this. Now we have uh, both the Volatile Staff and the Nightmare Staff. Beautiful. No need to, uh, you know, have to switch out the staff. So it's a, it's a nice, convenient thing. I'll take it. Ideally, one more staff, but I'm sure we'll get another staff because they're just the most common thing by far. So recently I unlocked Full Inquisitor on the Iron Man, the best in slots, crush bonus armor in the game. And it's also tied with Bandos for the best strength bonus in the game as well. And yes, this armor is super useful because it's basically overall the best DPS melee armor in the game. And it offers a lot of utility, even though it is considered a niche item. One of the biggest utilities that Inquisitor has is augmenting the Scythe of Vitter to new levels. So the Scythe of Vitter is usually a slash based weapon but it also has a crush style and it can be really useful on creatures like Cerberus, Calfi Queen, of course Nightmare, basically things that are weak to crush. But the Scythe does have not the highest crush bonus so it often misses a bit. And with the Inquisitor though, you add so much more crush accuracy onto your scythe that it is incredibly godly on those mobs. So the scythe inquisitor setup is actually stronger than even the inquisitor maze on the bosses that I mentioned previously. So in this video I'm testing it at Kelfi Queen and Cerberus and of course I'm going to be going for some new PBs with the scythe inquisitor and nightmare as well. So the scythe is incredibly expensive to use, 3 blood runes per hit, so I can't spam this in the long run. However, just you know, for fun and to be able to use it at the places I mentioned, I think fully charging it to max charges is going to be adequate. So that's going to cost us 60,000 blood runes, which will give us 20,000 hits. I will also fully charge the Sang Staff because I'm going to be doing Nightmare and that's essential. And for the Sang Staff, it's going to be costly as well. Probably another 50 to 60,000 for the same amount of charges. So yeah, we are uh, being bled dry here, you know, to use these weapons, but it's well worth it. So the first big boss that I'm going to be trying out the Inquisitor Sight setup at is going to be Kelfite Queen. So the last time I went with the Mace and pretty much similar uh, equipment setup, it was 26 kills an hour. So we should be able to easily beat that kills per hour with Inquisitor Scythe. One of the cool things about the Inquisitor Mace was that I was able to hit through her second phase really easily. As long as I landed a Warhammer hit, so sometimes I didn't even have to switch to my range gear for the second phase. And I wanted to see if the Inquisitor side setup could do something similar. Just because flinching is really nice, I can save a lot of food. And the sight didn't do too bad, it wasn't as effective though on the range phase. Which makes sense because it's a lot less accurate. So yeah, it seems like the scythe is better off just sticking strictly to the melee phase. But when it comes to the melee phase though, the Inquisitor side setup absolutely dominates. Like the mace honestly doesn't even come close. I'm just hitting like 60s, 70s, and even 80s with the scythe. And it was really accurate, man. Even if I did not land a Warhammer specs on that phase, the scythe with Inquisitor was still hitting through her defense. Not bad at all, you know what I mean? It was reliable, consistent. Without the Inquisitor, the scythe just isn't that good on Kelfi Queen if you do not land a spec. So during this task, I managed to get a D2H, a few Kelfi hits, and a D chain, which is, you know, pretty, pretty nice. But anyways, I finished the task. Results weren't too bad, you know, it was definitely better than a mace. I was getting 28 kills an hour with the scythe and inquisitor setup. And the mace was about 26, so yes, it was about 2 kills more per hour. You may think that's not much, but like every hour you get an extra two kills. That's that's a lot of time saver. But yeah, man, it does come at a crazy cost, man. I don't recommend it unless you are insanely rich, of course.
So the next big boss I want to try out the Inquisitor Scythe at is going to be Cerberus. Cerberus is known for being incredibly weak to crush. So the Scythe Inquisitor setup should absolutely dominate this boss. There you go, task done. Please give me the Hellhound task. Come on. Waiting forever. Yes, we got it. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, holy crap. Only had to skip a few good tasks. Few. I'm not going to mention what they are because, you know, y'all going to get triggered. But, yo, yes. We already did Cerberus with the mace and we figured that out already, the data. So now we can do the scythe now and, yeah, compare the two. I can't wait. Before any of the new peeps come down to the YouTube comments to tell me that I'm not using a Spectral, remember, I'm on an Iron Man, by the way, and I don't have a Spectral. I would use it, though, if I had it. So I brought the BGS with me initially because I thought it would make the kills go by faster. But honestly, I was already so accurate with Inquisitor as it was that, yeah, it really didn't make much of a difference. So I brought back my SGS just so I can uh, stay longer and do more kills per trip. But the Scythe is absolutely filthy with the Inquisitor. I was hitting 500 XP drops multiple times, decently often, every hour. That was like 90 damage. It's insane. And honestly, 50-60 damage was very common at Cerberus. So I think that the difference between macing and scything here is going to be rather a uh, wide gap. What the hell, dude? This is crazy. Holy shit. Scythe is just so busted. I'm still shocked. I'm just still shocked by how overpowered. The scythe is, oh my goodness, absolutely mental, dude. Absolutely mental. I kid you not, I was doing so much damage to the point that the ghosts couldn't even do anything to me. I was able to skip the ghosts completely at like 40 to 50% of the time. This is insane, dude. Like with the mace, I was able to skip it, you know, every now and then, but like... I could go back to back ghost skip or like back to back to back ghost skip with the scythe. It's absolutely insane. And yeah, no like stalling or anything. No that, you know, weird tricks. Just pure damage. God damn. Another kill where I skip ghosts. Damn. Another zero ghost kill? Jesus. So the Cerberus boss is a slow attacking boss. It attacks every 3.6 seconds. And uh, yeah, most weapons you can easily fit in two hits for one of his as long as you go under the boss after the second hit and you wait off the cooldown as you can see in uh, this clip here. But yeah, it saves a lot of damage and I can uh, still keep up maximum DPS. Yeah, side 2 to 1 is really nice actually. It's surprisingly easier than I thought, you know, just going under the boss right in the middle and then going out. And then you can do two hits for every one of his attacks. Oh, what? I just got a Primordial Crystal. Okay. Alright, well, never mind. We're, we're all good now, guys. Because, you know. We had a shit start waking up with, to do this boss and dying. But, hey, we got a Primordial Crystal, so. 500, there we go. That was a 500 XP drop. Jesus, I hit the 51. Oh, that was a 6 strat, but goddamn. Dude, I finished this trip with so many restores. Uh, God damn. I just kept getting so many restore drops. I want to do figure out how many blood wind charges I end up using for 100 kills. Uh, 5, 6, 4, 7 charges. So let's see how many I end up using. Anyways, guys, we just finished the Cerberus task. And wow, the XP per hour uh, really, really does show. I, I did... I've been over three hours in one in one go, averaging thirty five thousand five hundred experience an hour. Jesus. Okay, so for hundred kills, I think it was five, six, four, seven, and we're at four thousand. So basically, we use sixteen hundred charges. So for one hundred serp kills, I costed forty eight hundred blood runs. Damn. Yeah, I'm glad I'm only doing this one time. You know, just just to test things out. But yeah, hoo -hoo, only for rich boys, man. You know what I mean? If you rich as hell, yo, this this is definitely the setup, man. It's so good. Uh, I just look back at the old video. 
with the maze and I was getting about 42 kills an hour and what the scythe is about 51 kills an hour so yeah man the scythe inquisitor is disgusting I'm, I was able to get 10 more kills an hour with the scythe inquisitor so I guess with Sly bandos it probably is somewhere in the middle it should be like probably 45 or something in the middle so the last thing I want to go hard with the scythe at is going to be at Nightmare so I can get some super nice PBs because that's the only way I can really PB at this point is if I uh, go all out with Scythe Inquisitor. But yeah, once that's done though, you know, we're going to slowly go back to using the scythe sparingly just so we don't have to worry too much about blood runes. So scythe has the mobbing ability and it comes in handy for like Hust and Parasite. So if I do not have claw specs, for the Parasite, and I do see Parasite under the boss, I can basically swipe the Parasite under the boss, and I'll still get max uh, hit capabilities on the boss as well. And all three hits will land. I'm going to try to figure out how many Blood Runes I use when I spam the Scythe for all of Nightmare from Phase 1 to 3, just so it'll allow me to you know plan a bit better in terms of how I want to approach the PB strategy. So I started at 18,579 charges and I finished the kill with 18,370 charges. So that's basically 200 charges. So that's about 600 blood runes. So it is quite costly. So what I'm going to do is I'll start off the fight with the scythe. And if the times are looking good, I'll keep using the scythe. But if the times are looking really bad, then I'm pretty sure the PB potential is already gone. So I'm going to go back to the maze and save some blood runes. Oh, that's so sick. Did you guys see that? So something really cool is that I can actually proc Phoenix Necklace simply by drinking a Divine Potion. So if I really just need a quick heal, and I do also need to pot up, I can combo them together. Oh, that was sick. Scythe cleared the Huss and the boss at the same time. That was cool. Oh, damn. This is definitely... This This is like a PB, bro. I have two minutes left on my shit. This is insane. 1 HP on that pillar. Oh, was that a PB? Wow, I finally did it. Literally PB by like one second, I swear. Oh, I just PB'd. That was sick. 1547, let's go. No, I'm getting a Parasite. But this is such a fast P2. Holy shit. I just got my fifth Parasite and the phase is just over. Bro, my staff, what are you doing, staff? Why are you hitting these tro ass numbers? A two? Come on, man. Rip. I don't even know, man. That mage, that mage phase was really bad. Oh my god, 1526. Okay, never mind. That was amazing. Haha. <laughs> Damn. There we go. The uh, the Inquisitor Scythe is definitely displaying its strength here. Very nice. Alright guys, is this the 1,000th? Yes, it is. Holy shit, we've done it. Four digits. Soul Nightmare Kill Count, goddamn. So just off of these solos alone, that's somewhere between 300 to 400 hours. Very difficult bones to get, guys. Very difficult. So the Inquisitor set effect is really good for Slayer tasks as well. A lot of tasks are generally neutral defensive stats. So in that case, you just want to bring max accuracy, you know, with uh, your strength bonus combination. So the mace would just be slightly better than like the rapier and the blade of Saldor for most tasks. And also something like the dragon hunter lance uh, on stuff like wyverns is actually really good with Inquisitor. Because lance with Inquisitor is actually more accurate on crush than it is on stab. And yeah, these wyverns aren't weak to stab or anything. So it's actually super sick for that as well. Oh, first time getting the superior. It's slightly bigger. It's not like caress size. I kind of missed the caress size one. Oh, what the fuck? Scary, scary. Monka, Monka. I don't even know what that what it did other than to stun me. So these Drake superiors are really easy to deal with. All you gotta do is step back when they're about to attack, and as long as you pray range, you will take zero damage. And you can also just avoid the uh, explosion stun attack that way. All right, no food? Yes, successfully done it. 7,000 experience. Oh my days. Let's go. All right, that is... I am now 2,000 kills, which means I'm 4x drive for the Drake's Tooth. So, yeah, no devout boots for a while, boys.
Oh, that's a max hit right there. 87? Wait, what? I can hit an 87? I lied. Uh, I saw 86 and I was like, oh yeah, that's my max. Nah, it's an 87. That's crazy. I'm only missing two ancestral pieces. I'm missing two ancestral pieces, but that's crazy. That's only two off the max. Eat up! Armored Hill! Pog, we just got Armored Hill. Almost died for it. Come on, man. Just die. That was insane. Ooh, nice. It just got a chain skirt. Let's go, man. Hell yeah. Uh, we got a master clue. Here we go. Oh my god, I got an Anku mask, dude. Ooh, baby. That is my first Anku, uh, ever Anku anything. And it's so expensive. Oh my god, dude. That's insane. Let's go, man. That's a that's a dope unique. Yes. Oh yeah, of course we gotta put it on. Cool, man. Uh, I guess I can see why this this has a lot of value, man. It just looks pretty sick. Wow, first one in three hundred masters. I, I think they're premium rare out of most of the uniques. So, all right, here we go. Ah, uh, mint rays. Oh, limpworts. Awesome. You know why? Look at this. I just hit. A thousand limps. Yes. Now we can start uh, another super combat mass making. Super OG viewers, you guys know what's up. You see this torso potion and finish? Yeah, I'm almost done using all of them. You know, from the mistakes that we've made uh, back in the day, back when it was a mistake, accidentally putting torsos in your uh, vials. That was like a death sentence. You know, it's pretty much useless. Couldn't be turned into super combats but yeah made that mistake uh, twice accidentally made like two to three thousand torso potions so yeah that's it this is the last two potions and it's gone completely gone from my bank that's another uh, bank space saved and yeah the the relic of a you know previous mistake is is over all right i just grabbed all my normal rune alks there's a bunch of other alks but you know i don't want to really want to out these just yet but uh, for the purpose of Sepulchre, I'm going to try to clean these out first. So let's see how much Mula is in the rune. Ooh, nice. 147. Yeah, I'm going to try to out all these while looking for the uh, Endurance Ring. So, Damn, you can definitely get a lot of Alks done, though. Holy crap. Ah, uh, well, there it is. 2x Dry Streak confirmed. All right, quick update on the Sepulchre. We are at 19 million agility XP. Uh, look at that, the statue update. Oh, this glows, man. That's so nice. Oh, I, dude, that's so sick. I even noticed the teleporting pads. You can see the light glow preemptively. So you can already have an idea of where it's going to be earlier. Oh, uh, this is awesome. This this part is going to be a lot easier than... Just because I already know where, where it's going to be. So I can just stand there and it'll auto teleport me and skip the sword. Pog. If you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely consider giving it a like. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a French chat. So if you guys need a place to hang out, definitely consider joining ours at Mr. Iron Bar. And also consider subscribing. That way you won't miss on future videos. If you do have Amazon Prime, you can actually support my work financially for free by going on my Twitch channel and subscribing using Twitch Prime. Anyways, I will see you guys soon with another video. Take care and bye-bye.